I'm here with Hannah Witten, noted YouTuber. We were just doing a video for your channel uh, yeah, about we'll building a PC. Wow. <laughs> which was an adventure. We'll, 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 let's just leave it at that. So I thought it might be fun to, whilst we're here, just do a very quick video talking about books because you are a massive bibliophile. Yes, I love books. For those who don't know who you are, very mm -hmm. briefly, what do you do online? I make videos um, a lot about sex and relationships education and about periods and just generally breaking down taboo topics and apparently I also um, play video games and now, yes. <laughs> and now I'm building a PC. But not only so you have your own book club. Yes. And you've also written a book. Written a book. And very excitingly today we can talk about how you are writing a new book. Yes. Right. But, but oh, we'll get on to that. That's, that's a tease. So, so what are you reading at the moment? I am currently reading Inferior by Angela Saini. It is about a lot of science research that's been done into the differences between men and women. There's a, maybe there are differences, maybe there are not. Mm. So it's a lot of psychology, biology, evolutionary biology. It kind of takes you on a history of all of the research that's been done, like kind of like from Darwin up until like current research that's been do it, being done. And it's a lot about um, sexism within the science industry. Mm. Um, and then also, interestingly, how studies are then portrayed in like the press. Like, oh, so if there's yeah. like a groundbreaking study, what the actual study says, and then what the headlines say. So the stuff that the public learns. Yeah, yeah. And there's a filter. And, and often the... it's quite different. I mean, that's obviously <laughs> quite on brand for you. I mean, how much, yeah. when, you, when you're reading like, w w of the books you've read this year, mm. how many are like in your niche? And then how many are more yeah. broader reading? Well, this one's for Banging Book Club. Right, so which that, is your book club. Which so. is the book club and podcast where we talk about books about sex. But yeah, I think, I probably read, I read one a month that is of that at least. And then everything else is just often like from recommended or um, my long list of like to be read that's been oh, piling up goodness. forever and ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are your highlights of this year for reading them? Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. That is great. And How Do You Like Me Now by Holly Bourne. So this is a book that is told backwards. Oh. And it is YA and it is about a girl called Jewel and it's about her like friendship with Imogen but you never really can meet Imogen. You're like, who is it? Because it's all told backwards and you're like piecing it all together and is she who she says she is? And Right, okay. Um, and then How Do You Like Me Now was about a 30-something um, woman who ha had a, like a best-selling novel, in, or not a novel, a best-selling memoir in her 20s and is super famous because of it. And now all of her friends are like settling down and getting married and having kids and it's all about kind of like figuring out like how those pressures from society and like, and also a lot of stuff about social media in this and like yeah. having your shit together like publicly, outwardly. Because um, really she's also a public figure. I'm going to have to read this. This looks it's really good. It's hilarious. So another one that I've read, I don't have a physical copy because I listened to it on Audible, was Beauty Queens by Libba Bray, I want to say. Um, it was another Banging Book Club one and it was um, about a plane that crashes on a deserted, is it deserted, island. Um, and the plane is full of um, teen beauty pageant contestants. Oh my God. So it's the Lord of the Flies but with teen beauty pageant girls. And it is hilarious. And it is like a takedown of the patriarchy, of capitalism, but it also has like these mystery elements of like, so the, like, the bad guy is the corporation and the corporation basically owns every product ever in America. Oh, okay. And also is the, is the company behind the beauty pageant, but also the corporation are making weapons that they're selling to this fictional place that is meant to be like somewhere in like, South Central America. Hmm. And then they have a secret base that is on the island where the girls are stranded. And it's like, and the and the woman who's like in charge, who is like the queen, queen, queen beauty lady who's like all in charge is like also then wanting to like run to become president of the United States of America. <gasps> oh, bloody hell, okay. <laughs> it's so good. I wanted to ask like, does your enjoyment of books then, has that changed now that you've written one? Has it changed how you've read books? No. 
I think, I know, I don't think it's changed. I don't know, maybe, maybe I like, cause I write non-fiction as well. So it's a bit different. I think yeah. my enjoyment of novels is like still the same. But like you don't read it in a different way. You're not consciously like thinking about how, like the direction they've taken. I think I only do that for like individual books. If there's something about the style of a book that like, for instance, like this, mm. I find it really interesting in terms of like, you know, how did she piece it together? Like, how, does she know like the whole plot first? And then like, did she write it in chronological order? Oh, like, so it's only like for, if the book makes me think about how it was made that it's I would like do It's like if you that. watch a film and you kind of think, how did they do that yeah. shit? Kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. So, right, we should probably talk about then. We teased it already. What is this new book about? It's called The Hormone Diaries. I have a web series on my channel that is about, I came off the pill and documented like, um, getting my period again after like not having period for seven years and like figuring out contraception and and all of that stuff and yeah it's a book about everything that I've learned over that two years and then also including a lot of other people's hormone diaries because I'm but one body. Ah, okay. Um, so, so it's semi, well, it's autobiographical for, for for part of it. Yeah. So, but it's also like information and yeah. education as well. Oh, I see. So yeah. it's, it's kind of like a, what you do with a lot of your videos in that it is a personalized narrative. Mm -hmm. That's what people attach to. And then, then also you're like, educating. yeah. And then this is what I've learned. And X Y Z, by the way. Da 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 da. And then, and then having other people's diaries. Is that people well. that you know personally, or do people? Like no, people from my audience. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, a, oh God, so it's, it's like a kind of not crowdsourced kind of uh, non-fiction. Yeah. That's super interesting. <laughs> I mean, okay, so it's a wide- The stories are incredible. There's so many like really funny ones and then like some really heartbreaking ones. I can imagine, yeah. yeah. I mean, why did you decide to do it as a book rather than doing, I don't know, say, continuing the, the, the video series or, or turning that into something different? I feel like with the video series, I'd kind of like come to a head with my personal journey in terms of documenting that. I occasionally still make videos with other people to talk about their stories if there's like a topic area that I haven't covered yet. But the reason why I want it to be a book was that one, the Hormone Diaries, the name in itself lends it to be like a physical thing. It's like a diary. Um, and then also one of my favorite things about doing this series has been um, people's comments and people like sharing their own experiences. And so I just wanted to formalize that. That's that sort of so anyway. yeah, You're using your platform to give them them a platform, you know, yeah. allowing them to share and, their stories. And also there's like some chapters that, are, so there's like about periods and everything to do with that and then everything to do with contraception. But then we've got a whole bit about like when stuff goes wrong, so like disorders or diseases and, and infections. And like, I have had UTIs, but I don't have PCOS, I don't have endometriosis. So then having those stories in for that. And then there's trans stories in there as well, with like, on hormone replacement therapy and that, cause that's like an entirely yeah. separate experience um, that I can't really speak on. And then pregnancy. I also have never been pregnant. Quite a monumental task to, to write something like this. Yeah. So like, how did you, did you break it down by section or like, what's your approach? Yeah, so you saw, we had, there was a whiteboard right here. <laughs> just, just for the sake of the shot. So yeah, I just know what the chapters are going to be and then I kind of like go, okay, periods. What is everything that I know about periods? And I'll just like write down all of these words. And then I just know I want to include all of that stuff within that section. Yeah. So it's like stuff about period products, say, stuff about PMS, stuff about like the actual bleeding, stuff about um, like starting a period, including all of that stuff. And so like with contraception, it's like, okay, well the pill obviously, and then like other hormonal contraception, non-hormonal, ways it affects your mood, ways it affects your body. Okay. Fertility awareness. So you're, you're so. Right, you can compartmentalize it. And then yeah, so, this so I just kind of like throw out as many things that I know and associate with those top and big And then how, how do you structure those into the form of a book? Do you, do you form like a narrative, almost like a narrative? I start writing and see what comes out. <laughs> Genuinely. Okay. I, the way I write is that it's word vomit. Mm. And then I send it to my editor <laughs> and I'm like, make something out of this. Yeah. Okay. Was, was this how you did it on the first book? Like, have you learned any lessons from doing the first book? Um, yes, I learned that I did it brilliantly. <laughs> <laughs> Friends of mine have always like, who have also written books, say that they've like edit as they go, which is like apparently not how you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Because then you just like don't have anything because then you're like, oh, this like 500 words that you just wrote, you're like, no, it's terrible. And you just delete it. And I'm like, I'm not, I won't do that. 
So what I did for my first book doing it, I literally just like wrote the whole thing. I was just like, and then handed it to them. And like, oh, okay. I did a reread of it, obviously, and like tidied like some stuff up, but I don't like edit as I go at all. That's, yeah, because I, I imagine that you are, you just stumble over yourself the entire time. Yeah, and then you're like constantly like looking for little things, whereas I'm just like, no, I'm just gonna like write the whole thing, do one read through, one edit, and then hand it off and like see what feedback comes back. To round everything off, I thought that I would, because I'm a, a talentless hack, I would steal uh, the end of an interview from, I, have you ever watched Inside the Actor's Studio? No. Okay, so basically they do a quick fire questionnaire at the end and Love it kind of gives this, this like overall assessment of your personality. Oh God. These are 10 questions yeah. and I want, so first thing that pops into your head. The first one is, what is your favorite word? First thing that came to my head was poo. <laughs> I think my favorite word is. You can be poo if you want. But it is, it does begin with a P. It's like, I love, it's two words, pork pie. I just Ooh, love the way it sounds. It feels in the mouth. Pork pie. What is your least favorite word? Clunge. What creatively, spiritually, or emotionally sort of gets you going? Planes. Planes? I always, I hate flying, but I always feel like I sort out my whole life when I'm on a plane journey. I like get out a notebook and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna plan. I know what you mean, actually. That's me in trains. Yeah, so, right? It's because I'm like, that. I'm not, no internet. I don't want to speak to the person next to me. <laughs> it just forces you to concentrate. <laughs> what is the opposite of that? What turns you off and gets your, and, and stops any kind of like juices flowing? I always like sit at my desk when I have like nothing to do and I'm like stuck in a rut and I just twiddle my thumbs. And it's like not breaking that thing that always you can gets me stuck. into a ditch. Yeah, like what I need to do when I get into that is just go outside and go for a walk. Yeah, but you never think to do it. Because yeah, you're like, but yeah. even if I've got, cause like being freelance means like you have like really busy times and other times when like nothing really is happening. And even during the times when nothing is really happening, I sit at my desk <laughs> nine till five, just twiddling my thumbs. And that's not helping me think of something new to do. What is your favorite curse word? Can I say anything? Yeah. C Ooh, that might well be censored. What sound or noise do you love? Okay, this is gonna sound, this is real niche. But I love the sound of my stoma farting. <laughs> to me, it's like, okay, she's working. I don't think My anyone, digestive system is any, doing a good job. I don't think in the history of this quiz has ever given that answer. And it's also all. really funny. <laughs> okay, what's the opposite? What sound or noise do you hate? Chalkboard or like, um, knife on plate, like Ooh. that. Uh, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Attempt. <laughs> Doesn't mean you have to be successful, but what would you want to try? Um, I'd love to try being a stage actor, but I don't think I could put up with doing like the same thing every day for like a year. What profession would you not like to do? Doctor or nurse. And, I, and that's as a patient of someone who spent a lot of time in say, hospital. I'm like, no, I would never do your job. <laughs> no, no, no. And then, well, potentially relevant final question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, ooh, oh, I would like him to say like, okay, sorry, Hannah, you were wrong. Like heaven does exist, but just so you know, everyone else got it wrong too. Welcome to the, the, the real, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is actually what's really up. Come and have a good time. I don't know. Well, that is all the questions. <laughs> Thank you for having a chat with me. So, um, what does that mean about my personality? Well, people can make their own conclusions. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I no, give me answers. answers here. Give me answers. <laughs> Doing it is available everywhere. There's, you know, anywhere you can find books. And when is the new one coming out? Do you know yet? Thirteenth of June, twenty nineteen. And you can check out Hannah's channel. There'll be a link in the description. And there's a video there when we try to build a PC. <laughs> It'll be finished. It will be ready. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Bye.